Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John, and we are going to be installing this underground propane tank. This is a 500 gallon, so the tank is 10 feet long, and it's 3 feet deep, and the dirt is going to end up at this point right here. This is going to be the access hole, so that is 5 feet from the ground. So I need a hole that is 5 feet. I'm going to add a foot to each end, so it'll be 12 feet long, 4 feet wide, Five feet deep. I don't know what else to say. Let's get to work. So this is my first real project after buying the machine and doing maintenance on it. And it doesn't take long for me to discover an issue. At first everything was working great, now it seems to be moving slow and has very little power. Problem is the propane company is coming tomorrow and I told him I'd have this hole dug. Oh! it goes again. Man, whenever you buy used equipment, it's a risk. You just have to take on whatever problems come with it. Uh-oh. It is not running right. It sounds like it's missing. It like intermittently misses on uh a cylinder or two. I don't know. I'm not sure what to make of that. That's probably why the guy sold it. <laughs> Here we are early the next morning. Got to get this hole dug before they show up. It starts out running very well um, and for quite a while. Any ideas? What do you think's wrong with it? So it ran perfectly at wide open throttle for 14 minutes and then it started up again. No power, moving slow. Alright, after sleeping on this and that thing running perfectly for that length of time, it's got to be a fuel delivery issue with the crud that I saw in the tank and in the filter. I'm going to try blowing out the uh, fuel line and then um, 
maybe change that uh, that pre-filter that I have in there. Uh, I may have to put those filters, I have that one extra filter coming in that could be restricting. I may have to put two in parallel so that there's plenty of flow. This is our fuel line from the tank. There's a fair amount of crud in that filter, but it seems like there ought to be enough to be able to flow through it. Let me blow back on this and see. You know, I got a ah, I got a fair amount of back pressure on that initially. I'm pretty sure there was some crud in there. Let's see what we get now. I may end up having to clean out this fuel tank. And if you're wondering where that air came from, that propane tank right there. If you haven't seen my farm and garden hacks, that's one of them. Pretty useful. So I dug for another 15 minutes with no issues whatsoever on how it ran. And at the bottom here, in a little bit, you're going to see that I'm hitting pretty solid rock. But luckily, I'm pretty much at the depth that I need to be. Running much better, so yeah, just a little crud in the tank. I'm a little deeper than I thought I was. I need to take a little off here and put it back there. Now in the center, I'm going to get, if, if I can, get a little bit lower uh, to put an anode bag underneath the tank. Anode bags, in the magic of the galvanic cycle, you put an anode bag in there and your tank won't rust. That always amazes me. So here I'm digging out a space for the anode bag. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. This needs to be buried with the tank. The propane guy told me it's best if it's buried directly under the center of the tank. I don't know if that's true or not, but as long as this rock isn't too tough for me and I can dig it out while I'm here, it's no problem. Starving for fuel again. Well, I guess it's not much problem. Let's put it that way. I still felt some resistance when I blew on it, so I do think there's crud in there clogging this thing. All right, the hole is done. Let me go get some breakfast before these guys show up.
Yeah, you got it now. bag of pre-soak in some water. Let me try to explain in simple terms what this anode bag is doing. The tank is made of iron and we all know iron rusts. The iron of the tank combines with oxygen to make iron oxide. In order for this to occur, the iron has to give up electrons. If we can somehow prevent the iron from giving up electrons, then it won't rust. It's really that simple. You could actually use a battery to do this. If you're providing electrons from a different source, then no electrons will come from the iron and the iron won't rust. Of course, a regular battery would die too quickly and using electricity costs money. So we need a different source of electrons that'll last a lot longer and be cheap. Well, whenever you hook two different metals together, you essentially create a battery. All metals have a different pull for electrons, and this is known as the galvanic series. So the metals at the top of this list are the most reactive. Here's iron right here, and these are less reactive. And what that means is these are happy to give up their electrons. These very tightly hold to their electrons and don't react. Gold obviously doesn't react with much of anything. So if you hook iron to anything above it, in this list, these will give up their electrons and protect the iron. Basically, you've created a battery that provides an excess of electrons and prevents the iron from giving any up. That's what we're doing with this anode. This anode is made of magnesium. The other commonly used anodes are aluminum and zinc, just because they're plentiful and relatively cheap. Note that we're using a copper wire to connect the two. Copper is up here, so it's also not going to corrode. So ask yourself, what would happen if we used a zinc anode and an aluminum wire? Well, the aluminum is the highest on the list, so the aluminum is going to corrode first. You're going to lose your wire. The zinc and the iron are no longer going to be connected, and the tank is going to corrode. Yeah. 
had that feeling. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to come up, so be careful. Yeah, you might want to, like, put a foot on the ladder or something. So here we're picking up one side of the tank to get it level. And here we're putting dirt in the hole to support the tank on that side to keep it level. We're doing this by hand because there's a lot of rock in this soil and we're trying to avoid the big rocks. If we use the excavator to do this, we certainly would have large rocks against the tank, which is not ideal. And now he's hooking up the anode bag. The life expectancy of one of these anode bags depends on the local conditions. In our area, he tells me that it should last 20 to 25 years. They have ways to come out and test, uh, make sure that it's still functioning adequately. And then when it is no longer functioning adequately, you can just dig a hole near the tank and put in a new bag. This is weed fabric that we used and it's basically not very good anymore. And I'm gonna throw it away, but what a great use for it. I'm gonna put it on top of the tank to protect the tank. Might as well. So I'll admit it, that rock's pretty soft. I was really thinking about just putting that back in there, but at the end of the day, I just can't do it. You know, putting this much work, something this valuable into the ground, and then putting giant rocks up against it to dent it and potentially cause it to corrode and leak. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I went and got a load of sand. Now the challenge is, that's a mulberry tree. This is a whole line of flowers and herbs that my wife wants me to preserve. Behind the excavator is blueberry bushes and other things that I can't encroach on. I've got this big pile of dirt here. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna back the dump truck, which is now full of sand, up to this point. It'll overhang these, these bushes. And I think I'm gonna take the top of the tailgate off and let the tailgate swing down. And then I can take the excavator and just pull the sand into the hole and then distribute it from there. I think that'll work. The dump truck's having problems. I think it needs a new clutch. Future video.
Well, the excavator definitely needs some work. That left track will not hold pressure for any length of time at all, so I've got to rebuild the, uh, the track adjuster. The gas tank needs cleaned out. It just lost power again. And the cylinder on the blade uh, leaks. It won't hold position for long at all, so the excavator starts bouncing around all the time. So three, uh, three pretty significant things I got to fix on that, but at least they're things that I can fix. have some more topsoil uh, a pile that I've been wanting to move uh, but it's gonna have to wait until my dump truck is fixed and I will put that right here I'm pretty happy with that it's not perfect you know there's a little bit of subsoil mixed in with some of that topsoil but you can certainly grow stuff in there that'll be fine So the line's still exposed because we have to wait for the inspector. That's always the case, isn't it? At this point they've filled the tank, but obviously they haven't hooked up the line yet. I think they're still waiting on a final from the inspector. So thanks for watching guys. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button if you like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe because you're going to be seeing me doing some repair work on the excavator some repair work on the dump truck i got repair work on everything it never ends <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the video and i wonder if you if it occurred to anybody why are you putting in a 500 gallon propane tank well the reason is is because i want to run a generator that generator right there which is currently not hooked to anything they're about to hook it to propane, and then I'm going to be hooking it to electric. And you'll be seeing that on a video, too. I got so many projects going on, I don't know what to do. We'll see you on the next one. What? This one doesn't need repairs. <laughs>